Joshua is about to lead God's people into the land. It's going to be filled with challenges, and he's going to teach him how to set the tone. He says to him in chapter 1, verse 5, Joshua, no one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their ancestors to give them. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Holy Spirit, convict, teach, inspire, lead us today. Holy Spirit, you have been at work in new levels and new power among us as a church family. As recently as Wednesday night as we gathered here, your very presence filled this place. Mark this place again. Surely your presence is here. We have experienced you as we have worshiped out of the grace you've given us and your trustworthiness. Now God, lead us to a place of experiencing what you are saying. Help us to hear it, to hear it with our heart and to surrender to it so that we can set the tone going forward in Jesus name. And everybody said, let's give God praise in advance for what he's about to do. <clears throat> for these people, it's been 40 years circling in the wilderness their leader has died and now they have a new leader. They are about to go from that place to a new place. The land promised. Everything is changing. And God is going to teach Joshua that when you have all of these variables, look for the absolute. Everything in this text is changing, but God. He says, Joshua, as I was, so I will be. Therein is everything. Therein is this message. Therein is, is the workable lead to take your future and to set the tone as you do. With everything changing in our culture, I want to praise God that there is one thing that hasn't changed, and that is our awesome God. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. With God, there is not a shadow of turning. Go ahead and praise God. There's not a shadow of turning with him. We can look to him. He is steadfast. He is consistent. His character and nature is unchanging. And he is everything and more that we need to take the future that God has for us. With everything destabilizing, as we walk in the spirit, we too are encountered by that one absolute, God himself. The promise is the land. This promise has been in place for years and now finally, their future is in front of them. They are about to go, but it will be filled with challenges. Illustration number one, the Jordan River at flood stage. If they can get across the wall of Jericho and the barbaric people that are behind that wall, that if they don't take them, they can't possess the land. There would be no future without a fight, but he's going to say to Joshua, and he's saying to us, don't focus on the property, focus on my presence. Don't focus on your giftings as a leader, they have their place, but your gifts without my glory is no match for a river at flood stage. 
your talent and it is God given and it has its place, but apart from my presence, it will not bring a fortified wall down. The future that we have been given as promised by Jeremiah, which is, it's a good one. It's filled with hope. It cannot be possessed without the presence. The promise is the land, but the promise to experience the promise is the presence of God. As I was, so I will be. And if you look to me and if you press into me, you will have everything you need to then experience the future that I have promised for you. Joshua, you're gonna need strength and courage. The context of this strength and courage is the strength to trust me when you're at the river and you have to step into it before anything happens. The courage to keep the people focused when you're up against that wall and you're using a method that no one has ever heard of. The strength and courage. It is formed by you staying focused on my word. Don't turn from it. Don't think about it occasionally. Don't worship me, Joshua, just on Sunday. Don't hear my word, Joshua, just on Sunday, or you will not have the strength adequate for the future that I have for you. Joshua, if you're gonna set the tone, your devotional life must be daily and out of that, you're processing and meditating. And then, Joshua, you will set the tone and be successful everywhere you go. The presence of God is the confirming word of this entire series that the future God has for you the future God has for me is impossible apart from his presence. I cannot do what God has called me to do apart from the presence of God. Let that be a word that finds your heart, gets beyond your mind, because we live in a culture that places the focus on who we are, our education, skill set, personality, all of those things have their place. But if we lead with those, we will not possess the future that God has for us. But if we lead from a life that is pressing in to God, his presence, his power, his authority, then there can be an expression through the gifts you have and you will lay hold for that which God has laid hold of you. This incredible challenge of the presence of God at work in Joshua's life so that they could realize God's future is an entire message on competency. Joshua, you're a great leader. That's why Moses selected you with 11 others years ago to go and get a report on this land that now 40 years you are about to possess. Joshua, you had the faith, you had the conviction to bring back a great report. The negative report that 10 of them gave melted their hearts. Joshua, you have leadership, but Joshua, what you are learning what you are learning is that your competency for the future is not in your gifting, but in the glory of God's presence. Dependency on God. Paul picked up on this very important truth in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, starting at verse 4. Such confidence we have through Christ before God. Not that we are competent in ourselves to claim anything for ourselves, but our competence comes from God. Can we put an amen right there? Look at this next part. He has made us competent as ministers 
of a new covenant. Ministers, all of us in the New Testament reality, we get to serve, we get to minister. No one has different access than any other believer. We all have that access to walk in the presence of God. He has made us competent. God has made us for things that we're incapable of doing without the Holy Spirit. So I say, welcome Holy Spirit. God is saying to Joshua, be clothed in the Spirit. For the body of Christ without the Spirit of Christ is just a corpse. For where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. You are a carrier of the presence of God, which means you can lift the atmosphere of any room you walk into. You can lift the mood of any room you walk into. We do not have to capitulate to the current cultural climate. Influence change. You are a carrier. You are clothed in power so you can influence freedom in an atmosphere of depravity, of darkness, of addiction, of confusion. You can set the tone. The book of Joshua has its counterpart in the New Testament called Ephesians. Joshua starts with God saying, it's my presence, Joshua. Ephesians starts reminding us it's all about the presence of God. The presence of God in Joshua for the taking of the land. The presence of God in Ephesians for experiencing the life. The land literally transfers into a spiritual lesson of the fullness of God in the life of God. The one difference is that the land has its limits, but the life of walking in the spirit has no limits. Joshua, as I was with Moses, I will be with you. And if you keep your focus on me and you meditate on truth, my truth, then Joshua, you will be prepared and you will see the future that I have promised. Ephesians, as the redeemed, we are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Think of an envelope, a letter on the inside. The letter is you. The envelope is Christ. You're in Christ, sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. The letter is marked from its origin, and then in the middle, it is marked with its destination. And then delivery happens. Enveloped, marked, enveloped, sealed, marked, delivered. We're getting a picture of what it means to be clothed in power. You are enveloped by God. You're sealed with the Holy Spirit. The mark, one is where you were, your past, but you're not there anymore because grace found you. Grace lifted you. You took a minute and danced on the grave that you once lived in. Now you're moving in transformation and there's another mark called destiny. And by the preordained plan of God that creates that destiny, now the spirit of God empowers delivery into that destiny, clothed with power to fulfill the commissioning that is on your life. Clothed with power. So Paul would write in Ephesians 6 about the armor of God so that we're ready to stand and we're ready to fight the good fight and we can pray and we can believe because truth is in place, faith is in place, power is in place, but it's not a weekend warrior, Joshua, it's every day. Paul, it's walking in the spirit. We can do what God has called us to do, not because of who we are, but because of whose we are. 
and the power we experience. You have been given a divine assignment. With that assignment, you've been given divine authority, the name of Jesus. Divine power, that's the Holy Spirit. Divine accompaniment, the helper, the paraclete. I never walk on this stage and preach by myself. And if I ever do, the sermon won't get past this first step. My helper is here. There's a power on this. There's something that is making this influential and it's called the anointing that rests on me for my assignment. These words carry authority, not because of me, but because of Jesus. These words carry power because of Jesus. And if you're an accountant, a teacher, a stay-at-home mom, a college student, you have a place and a space for your assignment and with it, authority, power, and the presence of God. Come on, take a minute and just lean into that. Lean into that, the presence of God, the power of God. In chapter three, where we are told that our competency is because of Jesus, because of the Holy Spirit, that he's made us competent. It is later in that chapter, verse 17, where it says, now the Lord is the Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And there is no exception. It's not there may be freedom. Where his spirit is, it's like light standing next to darkness. The light will always win. Where his spirit is. In these end times, we're saying we will not be content with a form of godliness. We will be convicted. We will not have form without power. In all of this formation, we will say, Holy Spirit, please empower us because without you, the work will not be done. This, this passion for the presence of God, this heart to be consecrated unto the Lord, to recognize our desperation for him because without him, we can't live up to this this challenge that is before us has a flip side. With him, all things are possible. With him, coming into my mind right now, I know it's the Holy Spirit. I'm thinking of Elijah. And I'm thinking of Elisha. Elisha comes to Elijah and he says, I want a double portion of what's on you. I wish I had the time to take you through the Old Testament to New Testament teaching that you are the sons and daughters of the double portion. So what I'm about to tell you, it's available for every one of us. But here's what I think the Lord is prompting in my mind that a double portion, one way it's calculated in the life of Elisha compared to Elijah is that by right at the end of Elisha's life, he had done right at double the miracles of Elijah minus one. One short of double the miracles and Elisha dies. There was this open grave and they had thrown the body of Elisha into this grave. It had been a couple days and the enemy comes to raid this area and there are these people preparing another body for burial. And when they see the enemy, they just pick up that dead body and throw it in the same open grave where the body of Elisha is. And when that person that they threw in, when that dead person touched the body of Elisha, that 
person came back to life. And that equaled double the miracles that Elijah did. And I feel the Holy Spirit saying, he needs a church clothed in power that can walk into the darkest places. There are so many tombs that people are trying. They think it's the answer, but it's just a tomb. And God needs a church that can walk into these tombs that people are trying as carriers of freedom and your very presence. Your shadow, your influence, you just being there, resurrection starts happening. Catch a vision because the success that God promised Joshua was not just earthly success. It was spiritual victory after spiritual victory. Let's be clothed in power and fulfill our commissioning as the worship team joins me. I would like to tell you that in Joshua 14, they had conquered the land and Joshua is going to make assignments and he would say like to this group, okay, here's the acreage you, you will get. This will now be your home and kind of like your zip code. And now that promise of you would live in a home that you didn't build and you would reap from crops you didn't plant, now it's happening. You would get your assignment and you're now in the place that flows with milk and honey. Caleb walks up. He reminisces with Joshua. He says, Joshua, when we went and got a report of this land 40 years ago, we came back with the conviction, a conviction, a report from the conviction of our heart and said, we can do it. We carried samples so that people could get just a taste of what the future held. But the 10 faithless leaders they shared their report and it melted the hearts of the people and it re resulted in 40 years of wandering in the wilderness. And now, now the time has come and they're about to step into it and Caleb says, Joshua, I'm 85 now. What will come after that? Will he say, how I wish we were able to do it back then because I wanted the hill country. I wanted to take the area where the giants live. I wanted to get rid of them and set up home there. I'm 85 now, Joshua. So somebody else is gonna have to do it. You know, you know the story. He said, Joshua, I'm 85 and I'm as able today as I was then, give me the mountain. Yes. Let the Holy Spirit be the teacher today. Get this at the level. The spirit of the text is about the profound power of the presence of God that is not limited by a raging river, a walled city, or someone's age the strength and the courage to do what God has called you to do. It doesn't come from your resume, but the presence of God. The mountain that is in front of you, it's bigger than you, but yet it's your mountain. And you will climb that mountain because he will give you the strength because it's not by might, it's not by power, it's by the Spirit. Somebody's getting it today. 
I look at people across this place that I know if God gave them a mountain. John and Darlene are back from Malawi. Years ago, they came and met and said, God given, has given us a mountain. We don't know how we're gonna climb it. And they've been climbing ever since. And it's revolutionary what God has done because they're empowered. They have the authority of the name of Jesus. They have the fellowship, the friendship of the Holy Spirit. They're in their assignment. But the victory is coming from God. Walking in the power, commissioned because they're clothed. Let the Holy Spirit be your desperation. <clears throat> there have been times in my life <clears throat> I've been desperate. God, God, I want to, I want to get this project done. There's been a desperation around the structure, around the future. God has taught me. Be desperate for me. If you're desperate for me, you'll get the future. He said in the New Testament, if you'll just seek him, you'll get all of that. Anybody desperate for God? Do you see today? That's, that's the secret to setting the tone is pressing in to God. Mm. Mm. We just walked into a special place this morning. And God is saying to somebody here, there are rivers that you can't cross, but I'll make a way. There are barriers in your path and you can't bring them down, but I can. There are enemies that have stepped up to try and oppose you, but I'm greater. When you have an enemy greater than you, you need to find somebody greater than them. Let me introduce the Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit. <laughs>